sleep paralysis monsters, and depressing family dramas collide in this independent Swedish feature. The film opens with the on-screen dedication, For Mum and For Dad, I Miss You. A nice sentiment, but it also lays out the tone of the story to come. Marianne is a film based in grief and familial tensions. Our protagonist is a man named Krista, who seems to suffer a tremendous amount of misfortune. In the main plot, Krista's wife Eva has just passed away in a car crash where he was in the driver's seat. This leaves him alone to care for both their newborn baby Linnea and teenage daughter Sandra. The older child despises his guts and is in the middle of a rebellious streak. You can tell this because she dresses solely in black and is dating a weird older loser named Stiff. Stiff. Krista is also a teacher, which is revealed to be a thankless job from which he gains no joy and receives no respect. Well, that's the story of my life, no respect. He also appears to have very few friends, and instead finds southern comfort from frequent glasses of whiskey. So, this character is a bit of a sad sack. Do we feel sorry for him? Naturally. But should we? Krista's troubles aren't all bad luck. Flashbacks gradually drop breadcrumbs regarding this family's history, which reveals that Krista brought a lot of this turmoil on himself. In short, he was a cheating bastard, breaking up his family over a long-term girlfriend, the titular Marianne, who has also wound up dead, incidentally. His wife had recently taken him back after a long separation, hence the baby, but the cracks in the foundation had been firmly and irreparably established. With all this guilt and grief piling up on Clister, it is no wonder that his blood pressure is higher than the Burj Khalifa, and his mental state requires therapy. Worst of all, at night, Krista now wakes in a state of paralysis, as some manner of demon or monster haunts him. He is unsure if the villain is real, and enlists the help of a cult-loving weirdo Stiff, Stiff to try and ward off the callous spirit, who may or may not be an incarnation of the spurned Marianne Unfaithful. The sleep paralysis angle is the obvious draw for this film. Of all the weird phenomenons that one may actually encounter in real life, sleep paralysis is one of the creepiest. I have only experienced it the one time when I felt the presence of a menacing, hunched old woman in my bedroom, inexplicably caused by falling asleep during end of days of all fucking films. You're a fucking choir boy compared to me! A choir boy! Still, once was more than enough for a lifetime. Screw that shit! Marianne treats the experience with the appropriate levels of suspense it deserves. There are several paralysis scenes throughout the narrative, but they are all very brief and often arrive unexpectedly. Each time you invest in the personal dramas, then realise you have returned to Clister's haunted bedroom, a very real tension kicks in. It is fed to us piecemeal. First, we only see Krista, but get a sense of something ominous lingering nearby. Next, we hear sounds. Next time, we see parts of a body obscured, and so on, and so on. It is really quite effective. The spirit is borrowed from Swedish folklore, the old notion of a Mara, an entity which sits on your chest and ceases your ability to breathe, inviting terrible nightmares. The film explains that these spirits often take on the form of vengeful women, and are very dangerous, but can be kept at bay by deploying linseeds in tactical fashion. They also don't like the smell of human sweat, so I'd be safe after climbing a small set of stairs. The trouble with Marianne is that it clearly is made very independently, and is the work of a first-time filmmaker, so the final product still feels a little rough around the edges. The opening credits feel like the editor just slapped on a random Windows Movie Maker font and called it a day. You thought it was scary for a Marley to suddenly appear? 
What about the unexpected appearance of a boom? The overarching story is told well, but the dialogue sometimes leaves much to be desired. Stiff. Perhaps it needed another pass at the script or two. The cast is mostly comprised of amateurs, so I don't want to throw much shade their way. Sandra Larson, Dylan Johansson, Tintin Anderson, and this guy, who looks like he really wants to tell me that it's Friday, he's in love. The two bigger players in the cast are Thomas Hedengran, who is known in Sweden, and Peter Stormare, who will be more recognisable to international audiences, appearing in the likes of Fargo and Jurassic Park 2. Good old Dieter. Having said all that, Marianne is still a promising debut. With a bigger budget and experience now gained, I expect director Philippe Tegstedt could have progressed onto some great things. Unfortunately, it appears his film career basically started and ended right here. Aside from a thanks credit for Ghost Shark 2 Urban Jaws. What an honor! If you can overlook the flaws and go with the flow, you'll find a nice little heartbreaking tale of a family that is ripped apart time and time again, with the added bonus of some well-crafted sleep paralysis terror. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go destroy my end of days DVD. I can't take the risk. <laughs>